think being a millennial, I'd be good with technology, but uh, I'm not. You can ask all my students. Um, so, so this morning, uh, we're going to be looking through uh, a very unique story in the Bible. It's the only story we have of Jesus between his birth and when he starts his ministry at around age 30. Uh, it's a wonderful passage. When I was um, told I'd be preaching, then it'd be December 26th, now this week, um, I wasn't sure what to preach on. And so I was guided to, well, the lectern, something that churches use to kind of run through the entire Bible, kind of going alongside with the seasons. And so I looked up that, and it gave me this passage, and I thought it was uh, maybe funny, maybe a little ironic, that is about a 12-year-old student uh, when I deal with students all the time. I get to hang out with students all the time, deal with sounded negative. Uh, <laughs> but I thought it was really exciting. I was like, oh, I got this in the bag. It, it's about students. I know students. Um, but it, oftentimes, when you dive into God's Word, uh, and you read it, and you hear from those who have gone before you, taught uh, God's Word is often humbling. It's often guiding. It's often um, opening of your mind and granting you wisdom. Uh, as I'm nearly 30, I need all the wisdom I can get. And so I really thought, reading through this passage, it showed what Christ was like as he grew into the man we know all those stories about. So a question I want to ask that I was asked constantly throughout seminary uh, by one of my professors, Dr. Duncan, he would say, uh, how do you reckon with who Jesus is? He says, all too often we know his teachings, we know the words he said, we know uh, that he died for us, but if you sit and realize that Jesus was a real person who lived in our world, who grew up, who potentially probably stubbed his toe, had to get haircuts. How do you reckon with a live Christ who lived without sin? And seeing how he lived, how does that affect you today? And I think Luke 2 really kind of highlights a really important part about uh, who Christ was as a child and who he will be um, when he gets older as a teacher and as ultimately our Savior and King. So if you'll turn with me now to Luke 2, um, but before I read, uh, let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray you be in my head, in my thinking, uh, in my heart, and understand my lips and my speaking. Let not my thoughts and works be spoken this morning, Lord, but rather your word uh, be preached. I pray all this in your precious and most holy name. Amen. So once again, I'll be reading from Luke 2. Uh, 11 verses, verse 41 through 52. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. When the feast was ended, they were returning. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went on a day's journey. But they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them, and he came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with man. And so when I first read this passage, like I said, I was approaching it from uh, the the stature as a student. If, if I had a student who's 12 years old who is wanting to talk about the Bible, wanting to learn about it, how would I approach that? Um, and I think in this passage, it kind of highlights three things that Jesus kind of accentuates is what, how he grows in wisdom, how he grows in understanding, how he grows in um, 
making the decisions and interacting with the world the way he does it, right? Wisdom isn't just being smart, knowing all the answers, but it's knowing how to communicate. It's knowing how to walk. It's knowing how to love those around you. So all of these uh, points this morning will be about love, love for the Father, Christ's love for the Word, and Christ's love for people. The passage starts out, uh, Jesus uh, was going for a regular festival. Uh, This passage kind of accentuates that Mary and Joseph were good, pious Jews. Um, Tommy talked about Christmas Eve, but his parents played a big part in making sure Christ kept the covenants. Christ uh, followed the laws that were um, given in the day in the Old Testament, and that not only is shown through his circumcision, but also through going to all these different festivals and going through these different things, going to temple. And Jesus was 12 years old. In Hebrew culture, in Israel culture, uh, that was kind of the ready for, you've probably heard, bar mitzvah, when he becomes a man. And so this was a very important time in Jesus' life as a boy, uh, about to become a man. And so he uh, goes to this festival with his family, and they probably traveled in great numbers with all of uh, his friends and acquaintances and family members, and they end up leaving Jesus behind. Um, while he's there, they say it took three days, and this whole time, uh, we can only assume, and from where they found him, that he was in the temple. They were sitting and learning from the scribes and the teachers, but he was also responding and interacting with the Word and with those teaching it. And I think it really kind of highlights the fact that Christ knew um, who he was. He says it when he was talking to Mary and Joseph, when they asked him to respond why he had done this to them, that he, did they not know he was supposed to be in his father's house, that he was listening to what God, his father in heaven, his will was. So people often speculate, they're like, when did Jesus know that he was Jesus? Was it at five? Was it at seven? Uh, We don't know a definitive answer, but we know at 12 he knew who he was. He knew he was God's son, the creator of all things. And I think it's safe to assume that Within that, if he knew he was God's son, he probably knew what was to come. And so how did he approach that, knowing how his life would turn out? Did he, did he cower? Did he go just about his business uh, being like, well, it's all going to happen? No, he dived into God's word. He listened to the Father, and he um, showed his love for his Father, his God in heaven, by uh, going to the different practices and also following um, what a boy of his age would be doing, and that's learning from the scribes and the teachers of the day. That this passage highlights that Jesus, um, at 12 years old, knew that he was a a human, right, with hair, with, uh, with everything that goes along with being a person, but he also was God. Um, in our belief system in Christianity, we know that God is fully man and fully God, that he's two entities, and that they don't um, infect one another, that he's able to live a full life as a human. He had temptations we see later on, but he went against them, and how did he defeat those temptations? Well, what are the things he says to uh, Satan when he was accusing him? He quoted scripture. We only can guess that this started from a love of God's word, that the love from his father was not only sitting in the temple, but it was sitting underneath his teaching, it was diving into the words that God uh, had laid out in the Old Testament. You've got to remember the New Testament didn't exist uh, at this time. Um, and that Jesus, who was there with the Father at the beginning, uh, was, was rereading, what was um, understanding all of these things. He was understanding who he was becoming by reading through the Old Testament. In the beginning of John, we see that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that word became flesh. John talking about who Christ is. This teacher that he had followed for so many years was God's son. Was this divine being who gave it all up, who humbled himself for me and for you. And then Luke in in chapter 2 talks about his humanity. That he also suffered as we suffer. That God is the great comfort, that Christ can comfort us because he knows what suffering is like. That his life was hard. That he knew he didn't have an easy road ahead of him. And so how did he prepare for that road? By showing his love of his father, by diving into the word, 
And that's the second thing we're going to talk about with the love of the word. I heard a quote recently that in order to feed something, you must be fed yourself. And if we're filling up a bucket in order to kind of pour into someone's emotional or spiritual bucket, you've got to make sure you have a full bucket of your own. If you're trying to pour into someone's uh, life, but you are empty, then it is um, that much harder to show love into someone's life, to show them that grace uh, and that peace, to teach them the, the wise things uh, that you have learned. And that oftentimes, uh, when uh, pastors or people who are teaching God's Word don't know what to say or have writer's block, a lot of the times maybe we can look at the uh, maybe not feeding ourselves. All too often is very easy. I found this in seminary that I was uh, writing papers and learning all this cool stuff about the Bible and history, but I wasn't taking time to actually let it impact my heart. I was letting it sit up here, wasn't letting it affect me uh, on a personal level. And I think this kind of uh, mirrors back to my entire life. When I was in high school, I knew I wanted to go into some kind of ministry, and then being a high schooler, I thought I had it all figured out. I knew the answers. I could tell you, you know, which books of the Bible there were. I could tell you Jesus' name. You know, I figured everything out, and I was going to college and I was like, I don't, I don't even need this, but we're going to go because it's what you need in order to get um, going where I wanted to go. And then I was, was greatly humbled <laughs> in college. And I realized that this knowledge hadn't become wisdom, that this knowledge that I had this, uh, for the word wasn't out of a love for it, but out of a uh, wanting to boister myself up. And so in college, I was greatly humbled. And I started asking questions and talking to those around me in order to uh, increase my wisdom and my love of the word. And so as college finished, I was prepping to go to seminary. I was like, man, I got it figured out. I'm so smart now and wise, and I got this ministry thing, you know, figured out. Seminary is going to be a breeze. And I was greatly humbled in seminary um, as I learned uh, from some great professors and some great pastors that I worked for. And as I um, reconciled with myself that I wasn't consuming God's word for the sake of my own heart, of my own knowledge, of my own understanding, but solely for these grades, uh, it was something that I really had to come to terms with. And so now I do my best to stay humble, do my best to dive into this book. That even when I think I have it all figured out, I realize I don't. Calvin, I think his number is a little high, but he said no theologian at any one time is more than 80% correct. I think he gives us too much credit on that. But I think within this, it shouldn't scare you to uh, interact with God's Word, but it should be an encouragement. It should be an exciting thing to learn about who our God is, that this love for the Word should be exciting because He's the creator of everything, that He sent His Son to, love, to die for you, not to stay dead either. He rose from the dead, defeating death, that this God who loves us, who gave us this beautiful book of nutrition, of fertilizer, it's an exciting thing to read, exciting thing to constantly learn about. That as we dive into it, we learn who God is, who Christ is, who the Holy Spirit is uh, working in us. And I think it should be humbling. And as we see in this story, Jesus is sitting in the temple. He's interacting with the teachers of the law. He's, he's learning about who God is and who he is and who he is meant to be. And we can see it throughout his ministry that Jesus knew the word. Jesus knew himself and how he interacted um, with people, how he interacted with the world, uh, the way he used scripture uh, in order to help those around him and to show uh, love and grace and ultimately uh, helped him while he was on the cross um, dying for our sins. So the last thing this passage, I think, shows us is Jesus' love for people. Uh, that Jesus, uh, in his wisdom, Jesus you know, knew quite a bit, uh, I think at the time of being 12, and he, he never used it to be snarky. I was a very snarky high schooler when I thought I knew everything. I was even snarkier a college student when I thought I knew everything. And Jesus doesn't ever use his knowledge um, to cast shame upon his parents. His parents... Um, you know, ask him why, why did he leave them, uh, why did they do this to them, and Jesus 
uh, talks to them about he was submitting to his Father in heaven. He was doing what God called him to do, which was staying in to learn under the law. But then he also uh, submits to his parents' request. It's Mary and Joseph's request of coming back home. I think Luke does this to highlight that Christ, uh, even up until his death, was also submissive to the law that God had written. That he had, um, that he didn't sin, and we know this uh, through his life, but sometimes in this story it can seem that way. But we see at the end that Mary, his mother, treasured these things in his heart. And a lot of commentators believe that Luke got this story of Jesus' childhood uh, from Mary herself or of a close friend. That um, a lot of times these stories, these little tidbits we see of Christ's life, um, we've got to remember that, that he was a real person, that these story Luke's right affected people deeply. Mary admits that you know, they, they didn't understand it at this time. I think that can kind of, um, could be Jesus' tagline for his ministry. We see that highlighted a lot. And when he raises up into heaven after he uh, died and rose again, uh, and then he ascends into heaven, he, he said he sends a helper, uh, the Spirit, to help us understand God's Word, to help to run through the Word in which God has given us, this big old book in front of us. And so this story of Jesus as a, as a 12-year-old, I almost said teenager, not teenager yet, um, tween, uh, it shows us that he uh, loves God, that he loves his word, um, and that he loves his parents. And that if Jesus was a real person, that he grew in understanding, how much more so should we as his followers, as his believers, dive into this word that he loves so much? Uh, I had a professor in the seminary who, who, when he would talk about heaven, he's like, I don't know much, but I do know that we're going to keep learning about who God is, that we get to learn about the creator of the universe, that he is infinite, and we get to enter into that, and we get to learn about who God is and what, um, what we are, because we are made in his image, um, all of us. So I think it's a beautiful photo, uh, picture, photo's the same thing, um, of Christ, of him growing in, in uh, knowledge and in wisdom and in stature and favor. Uh, I, I do think it's um, Luke added this in with favor with God and man because we know uh, coming up the next few stories, Jesus starts to fall out of favor with man. That as he dives into the word, as he continues to follow uh, what God has called him to, uh, those who... Um, refuse to, to see Christ for who he is, or, or maybe just uh, for whatever reason decide not to. Um, we see through the rest of Jesus' life that uh, he was a real guy who struggled with things, and he'd ultimately pay and die uh, for those things he believed, for those things he grew in wisdom for, for the word, so that me and you can live. So hopefully this story excites you to continue reading God's Word. Hopefully, uh, it shows that loving God, loving the Word, and loving people helps us uh, kind of expand our mind, increase our wisdom for what's going on around us, um, and helps us interact with this world. Um, I pray that you uh, love the Word as much as Christ does. Would you pray with me? Dear and Holy Father, uh, thank you for your Word. Thank you for the story of your Son, on what he's uh, doing for us and has done for us, uh, that it shows that um, even Jesus uh, dove, into your, dove into the Word, into the Bible, Lord. I pray you give us that fervency, that excitement. I pray you to continue to give us uh, hope and peace and comfort in the new year and be with those in this congregation uh, and those we interact with. In your precious and most holy name, amen.